I appreciate everyone joining us for our monthly What's New at Smart Suite. Today, I'm going to go through about 14 new features that we've been working on over the last month, the two months there. And also going to talk about things that are coming and feel free to ask lots of questions. If you've got questions on features, Avi will direct the questions, interrupt me if needed to answer anything specific, but we'll also have time at the end of the presentation to talk anything Smart Suite that might be on your mind or new features that you want to lobby for while everybody else is on the phone here as well, you can do. Without further ado, let's just jump in. I'm going to kick off with one of the most requested features that we've had as a company here over the last probably six months, and it has to do with repeating task. If you mentioned repeating task just a moment ago, you hit the nail on the head. So here's the concept for those of you that might not understand what a repeating task means. A repeating task allows you to go into a record that you have for a task currently. And I'm just showing an example from DevOps that's here. You can click on the due date field inside of the grid view or inside of a record to bring up where you complete information about the date that you want to select or the date range. There's a new option that says repeating task that is located at the bottom that once you open that, it then gives you some additional items associated with this particular task and that you might want to duplicate or repeat this task based on a certain events or days or dates that happen. So I'm going to run you through the various options on how you do that. I appreciate and just want to say thank you to the hundreds of people that we spoke to about repeating task and all of the different use cases that came in that allowed us to find the right UI to support what you needed here. So a repeating task can be done based on a various schedule, whether that's daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. You can do it days after a particular date if none of the above fit. And then we have a custom option that lets you really dive in and customize things. So let's just say that I want to set something on a weekly basis. So it's looking at the date that's been selected already. In this particular case, it's Thursday, July the 13th. And I could say, I want this to repeat on, and it's going to say, okay, I want to repeat it on next Thursday, but you can also select multiple days. This was one of the common features or requests that came back in. So not only can I pick the day, but I could say, I want this to happen maybe on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday of every week going forward. And when this task is marked complete, this is when the rule will actual, actually fire. It then allows you to actually set the status for the new task. So if I click here, it brings up all of the statuses that you have for that status field that's linked back to this due date. It will, by default, it defaults to the first one in the list. Most of the time that is like for review or needs discussion. But if I wanted to come in here and say, I want to automatically change that to a to-do status, it will set the status when it creates the new record with that particular status. You also have the ability to select the fields that you want to be copied from the originating record in this case. So by default, we will copy all fields. We know that in a lot of cases, when people have hundreds, sometimes 400 fields in a form, that doesn't make sense. So we list each field individually. So I could turn off all fields and I could pick the specific fields that I want copied. It could be that you just want to copy the task name, description, and the assigned to and everything else would get filled in that particular record if you wanted to do that. So we give you control over two things, setting the status and selecting the fields associated with that. If I move to monthly, the options are just a little bit differently, are just a little different in that you can come up here and you have the first selection is I could say, I want this to happen on the same day each month. We recognize the day of the week that you're on, and we could say that I want this to happen maybe on the first Thursday of each month, the second Thursday, try to make it simple for you on that selection, or you can come in here and you can just pick. I want it to happen on this particular day of the month. Again, change the status and select the fields that you want to happen. Same thing on yearly, it just happens on this date, once a year moving forward. Pretty common for assessments to be done on quarterly and yearly basis. You could also set it to be days after. So you can come in here and pick, I just want this to happen on 92 days after this record is complete or custom. Custom basically brings everything together into one UI, allows you to do all of the features. For some of the people that are wanting to be pretty sophisticated, this gives you all the feature sets that you've asked for. So I could say, I want to repeat this every, and maybe every two weeks, every two months that's in here. If I say, I just want to repeat it once a week, you can pick the days 
and go on. So it gives you more flexibility on how you want to set things up. What actually happens, and then the last thing I'll say here is you have the ability to actually set things up and turn them off. So I can now, this repeating task, maybe I'm working on it, but I haven't made it live yet, which is pretty common that you want to do that. Otherwise, once you click done and save, whatever rule that you have in here will start firing from that point forward for you. So another common request was the ability to be able to turn these on and off as needed that they're set up. So once you create a task and the rule fires, it will add the new task and the new task will come in with the same title as the prior task that's there, but we will append the date to that. So that's what gives it the unique quality. So you could have unique tasks that are showing up here. So the task names will be the same, but the date will be what qualifies that to be unique. You can click on the little icon here at the bottom on the date field to collapse that. Notice that now that I've set it up, it tells me that I actually have a repeating task that's custom. So if I come back over here and I change this back to weekly, and then I close this, you can see now it tells me weekly. So at a glance, you'll know when you first come in that there is a repeating task and it will tell you the frequency that's set up. You just click on that, you open back up the panel to make any updates that you'd like to make there. We also, at the same time, move the time feature for the due date field to be off by default to keep things a little cleaner for most of you that aren't using that. You can click the time element and the time now shows up for you to add here. So we just a little toolbar that's here across the bottom. So I know many of our hardcore project managers moving from some really good project management tools to Smart Suite. This is a feature that you use quite often. We're pretty excited to have this released and we tried to fit in the hundreds and hundreds of requests that we had for different use cases to support in here. I'm sure that we've missed a few. So if we have, you just need to be vocal and let us know. And I would ask two things. I'd ask for that you let us know what you like and let us know if you feel that there's a use case that's missing that we need to solve for you. This particular feature will go live towards the end of next week in beta across all plants. So we're going to let everybody have access all at once instead of turning this on to a select group of people just initially that's there. And we're doing that just because it's such a common, a highly requested item. And we know so many people are waiting. We don't want to hold anybody back from that. Hopefully you love this feature. It's super useful. I've got 50 different ways that we're going to use it already just inside of Smart Suite. So. That's amazing. Let me just jump in here real quick with a few questions. Jeff is asking, can comments be copied to the new repeating task? That is a good question. I'm going to need, I'm not 100% sure if that made it into the first release or not. I will get an answer today from our product manager and we'll post that back for you. But if it's not, it will be available. I'm just not sure if it made it in the V1 that's here. Amazing. Thank you, Jeff, for that awesome question. And Andrea is asking real quick, is my understanding correct that a recurring task has to be set on each record that you want it to occur? C correct. Yeah. So a recurring task allows you to go into a, a specific due date in a particular record. This is different than like an automation. An automation, you can set that when certain rules happen, I go and fire and create records and do things, and that will happen in bulk across anything that you do. This gives you control down to a specific record to be different. So this time I'll drill into the record to pull up the due date field and set this. Now, all of these actions are specific to this record. Common use cases for this would be if you're performing assessments on a company A, and you need to do it every three months, and company B, you set something specific to do it every quarter, every year, something that allows you to go into each individual record and set up the schedule that you would like to have. Project managers, especially in construction, real estate, use this quite often as well. When certain tasks are complete, it automatically sets the next task up. That's it. Okay, amazing. And then two, I think, Closely related questions, Ted is asking, are there any particular automation functions that have been implemented that relate to reoccurring tasks? And Janus is asking, what if you have an automation doing this? Do you need to eliminate the automation? You do not. Automations, there's two ways to do some of this based on rules. Automations already cover maybe 60% of what I showed you today. Excuse me. You can continue to use those hardcore project managers didn't want to use automations. They wanted the ability to come into the due date fields individually. So this gives you the option. You can do 
one, both, or either that's inside of that. But know that if you're doing things in bulk and things are always the same time, an automation is a simple way you set it once and it fires every time and performs that task. If you have due dates that are specific to the individual task and you want those to reoccur on a specific time, this is the feature that allows you to do that. And I did fail to mention that once you set up a reoccurring task, when you're looking at the task in a record, notice that we add this little reoccurring symbol to the right to let you know that this task is reoccurring. Okay, amazing. I think we're seeing quite a lot of excitement for this new feature and let's move on to the next one. All right, so let's, we're gonna jump in really quickly, go through a few things. I'm just gonna use project management that most people are pretty familiar with as the backdrop to show off some of these features. The first one that I'll show is we've had the request to not always call something a record inside of SmartSuite, but that to let it be more specific to the name of the actual app that you're using. So you can now go into any app that you set up. In this case, the default is record, and you can see that I've changed the name to project by just selecting from a list that's here. Now, everywhere that you see would see the word record prior, like over here when you add a new record, it now says project. If I want to see the totals down here, you'll see the word projects, the totals at the bottom. Any of the UIs where you select information will now say select project instead of select record that's inside of there. So it just gives you more customization. We tried to keep this super simple, just a single click for you to be able to change this. So in this particular case, you can see the default is record, which all of you will have right now, unless you've changed this in the last week. I could come down here, search for task and change this to task. It's that simple. And it just made that change for you across all of the UI that's there. The reason that we're doing things in a selector right now, as opposed to allowing you to type in a name, is that we auto-translate into languages. So if you share these with other people or as templates, it automatically does the translation for them that's here. We've already gotten comments from beta users that they would like the ability to have the list, but also have custom where you could add your own with the understanding that's going to happen. I completely get it. The first step here that we're trying to do is get a really good list of names so that you won't have to use custom. So what we'd like for you to do is if you run into a situation where we don't have a name to fit a type that you have, please let our, our customer support team know by just clicking on the icon in the bottom left, sending us a message. We're going to add that immediately. We'll be adding each day as things come through to make it very quick for you. And then in a couple of weeks, we'll add the capability to add your own. Hopefully that, that you won't have to do that very often, but that's the goal that's here. The next item that we added here, another pretty highly requested item, mainly for people that have record sets that are in the three, four, 500 range with lots of smart doc fields where you're creating lots of content is you can now on the save button, you can click here and you have a save and continue working. So if you just want to ensure that everything that you've done has saved, there's no connection problems or something, or if you're stepping away, you can just click save and continue. The record just saved, you stay on this particular record that's here. We also, for people that are doing lots of approvals and workflows that's here, so maybe you've came in, changed the status to reviewed, and you now just need to go to the next item that's in the, your workflow queue. And currently, you can click on this arrow to go to the next record that's in the view that you're looking at, but now you can click save and next. And you noticed here when I clicked on this, it said save and next project. So instead of using the word record, we're very specific on where you're going to go. For our power users, you can use hotkeys. So I'm on a Mac, so I can just use control R without wanting to type down here if I want. And I could use control L to go the other way as well. So once you're past the first record, I can go either direction that's here. So it just takes you through, mainly through your work queue if you're viewing lots of information very quickly. So it saves you a couple of clicks that are there. The next feature that we'll talk about has to do with grid view. Grid view is now able to be shared, or excuse me, card view. Card view is now able to be shared just like you share a grid. All of our grid or all of our view types will be shareable here very soon. This is just the next one in the list. For those of you that don't know this capability just yet for grid or card, if you want to share this with somebody outside of your organization that doesn't have access to SmartSuite in a view only state, you can just click here. You have a number of options that you could set where I could say, do I want to actually, when I share it, do I want to display this toolbar where they can actually interact with the data or do I want to turn that off? 
that's here? Do you want to allow viewers to actually click and actually open up the record that is behind the data? You can determine when they do that if you want to share all the fields that are in that record or only the fields that are actually being displayed here in the view. And you could also restrict access with a password or a passcode if you'd want. I'll just click here to show you an example of what that would look like if you share that with somebody. This is very common for account teams, people where you're working with your clients and you just want to share information about who's on the team. It's also very common for marketing assets that maybe you're creating as a marketing agency back for a client and you just want them to be able to share and view the information. In this case, I allow them to click to go into the record, but I limit the data that they can see once they're inside that's there. So note that this is, again, this is coming for all the view types. This is just the next one in line that we've done. I'll go back to our client's projects example that's here and notice in here that I have a status field. I'm going to just click and change here. For those of you that are not power users yet, you can click here and I could go to modify field settings and pull up the ability to change the status field, or I could just simply double click on the name and do the same thing. It's just helps reduce one keystroke for you. So now you can come in and actually say, uh, or in the past, we've allowed you to pick one field to say that this status is now in a complete state. And what happens is it turns off the counter and it locks in the due date. And we tell you that by green here, that this has been completed. And the red dot is telling us it was completed after the due date, a green dot here would mean that it was completed before the due date that was there. So now I could come in, in this case, maybe I say, I also want anything that's marked as canceled to show as a complete status. It turns off the timer. It comes out of a person's work queue that's there and it shows that it's now complete. So you can have as many of those as you want. But at first we're gonna limit that to just a couple and we decided it's completely up to you based on the statuses of how you want to set that up. But it's super powerful to keep your data very clean if there's things that you're not gonna work on for some period of time that are there. I'm seeing users love this one. All right, excellent. There's also an additional feature that we added in regards to permissioning. Those of you that are familiar with Smart Suite permissioning, you can do permissioning at the entire solution level, or I can move down into permissions just inside of a particular app. So in this case, I've picked the task app inside of project management. By default, it's gonna inherit the permissions that I set at the highest level, but I can override those permissions and I could go in and pick a person or a team. So maybe if I would pick Emma in this case, these are the only thing that changed in this list of options is we've added a new status type or a new role type called assignee plus. So this allows you to go in and say, this user can only view and edit content that they've been assigned and can create new content that is auto assigned to them, but they cannot view or edit any other content that's there. So if you have workflows and you want people to only see what's been assigned to them at that particular moment, you can use this field, but it allows you to come in for those of you that have multiple assigned to fields in the same record. Let me, I'm going to exit out of here, show you a better example. So I'm going to come into projects and I'm going to do the same thing with permissions. We'll set this in this particular case, if I click on this assign to field, you notice that I've got a project manager as an assignment and I have a separate assignment of who the task or the project maybe is assigned to. So now I can pick the particular one. So maybe I say the assigned to relates specifically to this field that's in place. So now if, if the user is not listed in this field, they will not see this record at all inside of there. And... That one's pretty commonly requested by some of our higher end project managers and people doing some more sophisticated type workflows that are there. All right, looking through my lists on the next one. All right, forms. Let's see if I've got a form. Yeah, I have one here and change requests. This is the first part of many updates that are happening to forms. And for those of you that are not familiar with form, a form is a way for you to take information inside of a record, put that information on a form, share that externally. When users complete the information in the form and click submit, it automatically saves the information back into that particular table. So in this case, if a user submitted a form, then it would just automatically show up in this listing of records that are here. You now have the ability to use conditional logic at the field level. So maybe I came in and said, I want to have a form and there's different types of requests. And based on the type of request depends on the fields that I want them to complete 
below that typically. So now you can click on this. I can enable this, only show this field when these conditions are met. And then I can add as many conditions as you want. And the first condition that is met in this list will then display the field type that's there. This is the first part that's been completed. The second part is underway right now where you can add sections to forms. And you can also control entire sections of fields based on a condition. Those of you that are using Smart Suite to do assessments, again, that have hundreds and hundreds of fields and you group those into different areas, they may not need to complete that information based on something completed here. So you can trigger that off of any other field type that's there or calculation, and it will then completely show or hide that particular form for the user. All right, let's look at grid view. So there are quite a number of things that have been done in grid view. The first I hope that you've noticed is we're spending a lot of time working on just the performance of grid view with small and large record sets, with scrolling and accessing information, just optimizing and being as efficient as we can in the display of the information back to you, especially those of you that are on slower networks or you're not on a network and you're just using cell coverage that's here, you'll notice that things are greatly improved. And that's just the first step and quite a number of steps that we're taking on this side. Also, you'll notice that I can go into any field type when I click into the field type now, you're gonna see this fill handle that shows up below it. I can take that fill handle and drag it and it will auto update the records below with the value in the original field value that's there. I can also do things like I can click on a field, I'm gonna press shift in my arrow keys. And now you're seeing that I'm selecting particular fields of information. I can continue to go down and select more records that's here. I can, can hit control C to copy those fields. I could come down to the bottom of this navigation. I could say, all right, now I just wanna paste that information in. So I'm gonna do control V. So SmartSuite is smart enough to say, ooh, it looks like you pasted a whole series of information that's here. Do you wanna expand this group and paste each one individually? Or do you wanna put all of that in the first field that's there? So I'm gonna say, hey, let's just expand it. So you can see it's telling me that the paste is complete and that it just duplicated the gamma and the website information that's here, records. You can do that with any size record set. You can also go into another app and I could select task and I could take information that's in a task that's here. I can control C, I could come back into clients. I can paste the information back in. If I was in a view that only had maybe a title field and I clicked paste, it will ask you the same question. Do you want to expand? If we see that you don't have a field set up for that, we will auto create the fields for you and put the data in the field. Currently, those fields will be created as text fields. So the data goes in without worrying about having bad data and validation. And then once the data is in, you just double click and click here and you change it to the field type that you want to have in place. Moving forward, we're going to find ways to be smarter that if you're cutting and pasting data inside of SmartSuite, that we can track and understand the type of field that it is and auto create the specific field. But for those of you that are cutting and pasting out of other products or spreadsheets that are in, those will always come in as a text field and then you can quickly change to what you need. And the reason for that is what we found in the testing is most users we do data validation for each of our field types and we don't want you to have to worry about all that validation we just want you to get the data in and then you can change as needed that's there we are also working on some really interesting improvements to large data set performance meaning hundreds and hundreds of thousands of records being able to be displayed in the same amount of time that displaying 200 records on a on a view shows right now so if i click on task and i just see this information you'll be able to do hundreds of thousands of records with that same level of performance. This isn't something that's gonna come out here in the next week or so, we're probably a couple of months away, but I just want you to know that we're gonna be able to support very large data sets across every field type that we have here very soon with the same level of performance that you see now in the product. If you, we also now have a developer API that we are, helping better promote. I think most of it, you can come into any particular solution and you can click on solution API and we build a custom API for you that includes the field types for that particular solution that's in place. 
but people have came back and said, there's times when I just need to know the capabilities of the API. Can you make the overall API available with all of its capabilities, not specific to the solution? So that's available. So you click on API. We now take you to a page where you can click to go into the community, educated about that. If you are a technology partner and you want to learn more about using our API, here's how you contact us. But here's just takes you right into the docs. And it's just a traditional document that just describes every type of field type and the properties associated with that, how to use those, mainly for people that are integrating with Smart Suite, not as much our customers, but I just want you to know that this documentation is now available as needed. On our formula fields, I'll just show you just quickly, we'll throw formula in here. For those of you not familiar with formulas, there's two types of, or two different ways that you can create a formula inside of Smart Suite. There's the simple mode that's right here where I just pick a field, pick the operator, pick another field, and that's all you need to do to create the formula. When you click on advanced editor, we give you all the capabilities that are there for the really heavy users. So it includes every field type that you want. And if you want to include that field, you just click use, and then it includes every operator that's here. What we've added, just in, the additional functions that we've added right now are this array join feature. So if I click on that, you can see the details of how the array join and array unique works. Again, this is some of our power users, some things that they're needing to do. You're going to see us continue to provide three or four new functions based on the list that's mainly coming in from partners here every couple of weeks that are here. So this last one was the array piece. So if there are additional functions that you need, please be vocal. Let our support team know. Make sure that you go into the feature request and let us know about those as well. Let's talk about AI for just a second. I'm going to pull up a client record just to show the concept, make sure this is the right field type. I'm gonna change this to a smart doc field type. Smart Suite AI has been in alpha with quite a number of people and we're beginning to move outside of alpha now. So you'll be able to use, it'll be available to all customers that wanna be able to use that. Let me click in the task. I've got a better example here for us to use. So a smart doc inside of Smart Suite is really just the power of a document as a field type. So if you use a Google Doc or Word Doc, it just gives you capabilities for you to select the formatting that you want to have for the document. You can pick different heading styles that are here. We have a list of advanced options. If you hit the slash key that's here, that allows you to at mention people, link to other records, images, videos, attachments. You can auto set up table of contents that displays based on the heading styles that you're using. And you'll notice that there's also AI that is available that's here. So now you can say, I want to ask AI or use the smart suite assistant to create content. There's two ways that you can use that. You can highlight content that's here. So I'll come out of this and say, maybe I just wanted to highlight this particular content. I click AI. It comes up with a list of features that says, okay, what would you like for us to help you with here? In many cases, you could say, could you summarize this information? Maybe it's a page of content. Can you create me just a short summary? In some cases, maybe we write product requirements on our site and we want to say, can you generate a list of action items from what you're seeing in the requirements? And it will create those as checklists for us. I use this quite often on the technical side. You can highlight a particular word that's in here. Maybe like I say, portal. And I just say, can you explain this? So it has the built-in logic to help you understand the context of what you're reading that's inside of here. If you want to create new content, it's as simple as I just write a prompt of what I want. Let's just say create a cybersecurity policy. As an example that I like to use in AI, we'll go in and actually take a stab at writing that content for you. We're finding that on content creation for marketing product and GRC type policy requirements, controls type content, that it's actually very good. It's not always 100%, but it is in the 90 percentile. And you could just see here, it created a pretty good cybersecurity policy for me. And if it was something that I was interested in, I could edit that information. Typically, I would edit the content that's in here. I won't use it just directly from, from AI. What's coming here as well is you have the ability inside of this to, when you have a prompts, 
inside of your prompt, you can actually select fields from this record to include in the response. So maybe I'm writing a product description and I wanna, as I'm writing the prompt, I wanna write something and then say, pull data from, and I don't have great data here, but let's just say it's the status field. And I wanna use this information inside of the prompt in the creation of the content that I'm doing here. So all of your fields that are inside of a record, you have the ability to use in the creation of your prompt to pull specific data before it actually generates content that's here. What's coming next to this is you'll have the ability to create a prompt like I just did. And now I can save that prompt and I can come back and always have that particular prompt available to you. So if I'm, again, a product manager, I'm creating project project descriptions, and I'm using all these attributes inside of the record to be able to do that, I can save it once and I just click go. And now the content's created. Longer term, what you're going to see is the ability to use AI at a bulk level to create things based on when new fields values are changed or inside of automations to perform those same types of actions that you can now do just inside of the smart doc that's here. So know that AI is coming very quickly. The way that this works is each uh, each account will have the ability to have 200 requests using AI. And then after that 200th request, you'll need to enter your own open AI key if that's what you, if you want to use that. And if you don't want to use that, which we've had some of our customers come back and say, it's not a feature I want my users to be able to use just yet. You'll be able to go into workspace settings. There'll be a new section that will show up here that will be smart suite AI assistant you'll have the ability to toggle this on and off for your account. And then if you want to, the ability to put in your own open AI key, you can add your own key here as well. This will probably, we'll have some notes on this next week, but we're, the intent is it will be released at some point towards the end of next week to all accounts. And we'll have more communications on that at that time. All right, I'm just gonna hit you with two more quick ones. Mobile push notifications. I know that quite a number of people have been waiting for that. That has been available for about a week and a half. Hopefully you've experienced that if you're on the mobile app. If you're not, please download the mobile app. It, the same notifications that you now get inside of Smart Suite, you have the ability to receive those directly in the mobile app. And the last one, the second most requested feature that we have, let me find it, I had it preset, here we go. Gantt charts. I just wanted you to know that this is underway. I don't have an exact date for this, but we are getting close. So a Gantt chart allows you to go into, it's just another, it's a view type, just like any other view that we have. A Gantt chart allows you to link things together. And when I move an item, I can determine if I want the items that are linked that are dependent on this to move at the same level. So if I change the date, all of the items linked to that will auto change at the same time that's there. It's going to be super simple. You'll be able to just come in, pick a date field that's here. You'll be able to use filters. It will allow you to come in and use all the same filters that you use today. It also allows you to use groupings. So in the case that I was just showing, I could group the Gantt chart by project and I could see each project. I could also group by person, by status, whatever grouping that I wanted to see all of the tasks associated with that. You'll be able to add milestones inside of the Gantt chart that's there. And what's coming in Smart Suite is a field type, a new field type attribute that is associated with linked records that allows you to turn on, we'll use deliverables, it's not a great example, but assume that this was task. It will allow you to, when you add linked records, you can say that this is a precursor or prede predecessor task, meaning should this happen before or after the task that I'm in right now, and we'll auto show that, and then that will auto be displayed on the Gantt chart for you as well. Again, I'll have some updates in about a week and a half on Gantt charts with some better dates of where we're at, but just know that we are super close. And if you have an interest in being one of the beta users of Gantt charts, if you'll let our any, anyone know by just clicking on the button down here, sending a message to our team, we'll get you on that early list in the minutes available. We'll let you see it. And Avi, oh, there was one thing I failed to mention on the API side that's here. So webhooks are now available through our API. That's here. The documentation is available from what I just showed you prior. If you're interested in how the how that works, we've had quite a number of people that have been using webhooks already. Know that this is the first step to making webhooks available. What is coming now 
that we'll be working on is allowing webhooks inside of automations so you don't have to use the API to be able to do that. So I don't have a, an exact date on webhooks, but just know it's on our short-term priority list. We're working on it and it will be available just as soon as we can get it done and tested for you. Okay. All right. That was a lot in a short amount of time. I want to try to keep it under 45 minutes. Looks like I just barely did that. Hit me with questions that are coming up or comments on anything that you're seeing. Yeah, that's awesome. Those were phenomenal announcements. I see the excitement. We've got quite a pile of questions to go through, so we're going to start going through them. But folks, if you have any questions, comments, throw them. If any questions you want to answer live, throw them in the Q&A. Any comments or follow-ups, throw them in the chat. And with that, let's get started. Ted is asking, can customers sign up to use the beta version of SmartSuite? By beta version, do you mean the features that are beta that we're making available? And if that is true, the answer is yes. Anytime that we release a major feature, there's a typically a group of customers and partners that we've been working with specifically on that feature that have some of the more robust use cases. Each of them are included in that. And then anybody else that would like to have access, sometimes we even do alpha access to things so that people can try them live to help us kind of fine tune before we get the beta. So if you're interested in that, you just need to let our team know. In the future, we're gonna have a better process in place that once you sign up to be a part of the beta program, you'll always be included for any feature that comes out in beta before we go into general population. Okay, amazing. And Natalie has an awesome question regarding repeating tasks. So are the repeating actions triggered at the close of existing tasks? So if task is normally due on the first and I and set to repeat every month, now assume I mark it as complete on the second, Will the repeated task be created for the first or the second? It will be recreated on the second. So it goes from the date that the task is completed and then the action associated with that completion date. Okay, amazing. And Chris Duckers is asking, hey, Chris, good to see you here. Can guest, act, guest accounts be granted to the assignee plus permission? Yes, they can. So you can assign any permission. Amazing. Simon is asking, recurring task question. The recurring tasks function work on a checklist and subtask level as well. Example, main task is recurring, but I want to add a checklist or subtask item that is non-recurring, one-off under the main task. Yep. So right now it works with just the highest level, anything that has a due date field associated with that, what is coming. And we have had a number of people that we worked with also want the same capability at the checklist, checklist field type, which is what's being asked right here for each individual checklist item that's in place. Let's just see if we have a checklist field. We do here. So what you're going to have in the future that's not here just yet is you'll be able to come into this checklist item and have it reoccur. Now, we're, there's some complexity here of us knowing where you want this to reoccur, if it's inside of this record or if it's inside of a new record that was just created that was there. Once we get clarity and a good approach for that, the same functionality that I just showed you for the due date field will be available for the subtask. Amazing. The next question is from Alexander. Is it possible to have multiple conditions with and, and or in forms or just one of these? Yeah, let me talk about that in general. So we are upgrading our filter capability, which is conditions to allow you to have filter groups. This is being worked on right now. I would anticipate that we're within two weeks to having this actually released. This same capability will then be used everywhere in the product where you have conditions or filters. So you'll have the ability to do exactly what's being asked here in that I could have a set of ands, a set of ors, I could mix those, I could have as many. You, we have a limit on the number of conditions. I think it's around 10 uh, condition groups that you can set, but you can get very complex in your rule sets anywhere in SmartSuite, not just in forms when this is complete. Okay, amazing. Heather is asking, is there a plan for forms to allow the fields to be restricted in the same way that they are restricted in the record itself? For example, I want the filters I've put in place in the record to also be on the form, but I can't do that today. 
Yes, that is coming. It is, it's on the short-term roadmap. I don't know if Dev has started on that particular task, but we have a group that's focused just on the forms piece, and you'll be able to do that across all the field types. Very cool. Pat is asking, in grid view, can you select to freeze columns? You can. So, so there's just a freeze feature. If you're seeing my screen, that's here. And I can resize and drag and move that any way that I want to freeze X number of items. And then as I scroll, you can see that right now I'm, oops, sorry, I'm just scrolling the first one, but I could do three columns if that's what I want. Very cool. Heather is asking, is there a plan for more complicated formulas such as small and filter? I'm not exactly sure what that question is. So I tell you what, Avi, can you can someone on our team just make a note so we can reach back out this afternoon and better understand the use case? Okay, perfect. Hopefully Brian can grab that question from the Q and A. It's Heather asking about small and filter. Tom is asking. If the speed of large data volumes is being improved, will the row count limit be expanded at some point in the future, i.e. beyond 200K records? It, it will. I don't have an exact number. It's going to be greatly increased. I'll just tell you that. We're in the middle with a really good team that's been working on this for some time that's had some big breakthroughs on those record sets. And the two things come hand in hand with the performance and the large record sets at the same time. Amazing. Chris Williams is asking, could AI be used in SmartSuite to generate summaries of data or record and maybe give, I'm not sure what the next word is, of, I guess he wants summaries of data. This could be used for status reports, et cetera. So it sounds like what he's asking is not just the ability to look inside of a single record, but have the ability to look inside of multiple records to generate right. content that's there. It's going to happen. We don't know how to make that available for we know how to make it work. We're struggling with where to put it in the UI to make it easy for you to set that up and tell us what you want to happen and what records you want to have selected to be able to do that piece. If you have any examples of any products that are doing something similar, we would love to see the UI to figure out how to make it there. Now, again, the technology wise, that is possible. It's easy to pass that data. It's just trying to figure out how to make it available for you to set it up. Okay, amazing. I believe we answered this, but let's just review it real quick. Pat, Pat is asking, what is the status for webhooks? Yep, so webhooks is done, or is available via the our API, and webhooks now is being worked on inside of automations, both for the trigger and the action. Okay. Emmanuel is asking, it doesn't seem like a user can duplicate views unless they're a solution manager, but this would be too high of a permission for general staff. You can always duplicate views, but they come, they're available as private that's here. So it sounds like he's wanting the ability for people to duplicate and better manage what's in the public views piece. We are working on the ability by view type to have access controls on that view. And I need to think about the duplicate portion of that as well. So it's going to give general users more control if you want. Some people don't want that. So we're trying to figure out how do we add this capability and allow you to have more control here. But it will also allow you to come in and say, I only want this group of people to see tasks by projects. And maybe I have a different group that sees tasks by phase. If you want to, by default, anybody that has access to the solution will see the views you've set up unless you decide to take the permissions away. That's the most common use case for this is for users that you're trying to keep things very simple for, and you just want them to look at three or four views and that's it versus people that are maintaining the content behind the scenes, the more power users that need to see more views that have been set up here. Amazing. Our next question is, will, will call webhook be available as an automation action? It will, yes. Amazing. Ted is asking, you are much, much more responsive to customers than your competitors. How do you manage to do this with such a small team? It's just a philosophical difference, or is there something logistical that you do that helps you be better? That's a great question, Ted. 
It is. Yeah, I, I love that question, actually. And I thank you for recognizing that we work really hard to have amazing customer onboarding service back to our customers. That's just a part of who we are. We have an amazing onboarding team. We're very specific in the type of people that we hire in that role that really care about getting the answer, the right answer back to the customer and not just responding and saying that something is resolved. We have an amazing onboarding team. If you use them, please give them some kudos or a high five and say, thank you that's there. We also use technology. We use our own product to track things. We also use a product called Intercom that helps us manage our discussions with customers. And we can look at that information about 20 different ways to understand the types of discussions that we're having, where we need to make updates, maybe to help articles or include how-to videos to help with you not needing to ask those questions as much to, to find the information. But we spend a lot of time on the customer success side. So I appreciate you recognizing that. Okay, amazing. We have a question here from Chris. Is there a plan for find and or search functions in formula? I'm struggling. I need Peter or Artem, our product managers, to help me answer that question. I'm just trying to I'm trying to figure out how that would actually work. I, I tell you what, can you, Brian, can you capture the person's name and email and we'll get back so we can have a direct conversation with them about this and Peter, if, if you're on the phone, I'd like for you maybe to reach out and have this discussion. Okay. We have a question from an anonymous attendee. Is there a goal for us to be able to switch out different emails to communicate with clients, customers due to having small teams? Example, info at, support at, et cetera. So I'm assuming that you're talking about the communication center that's here and the email capability that is available that you can turn on. It's off by default unless you turn it on. And now I can send an email to somebody. So I say, create new email. What we do at SmartSuite right now is we auto create an email account for each user behind the scenes. We allow you then to send the email. You can CC yourself to your real email. So then it shows up in your inbox. And then each time that a person replies back to this, it comes in the context of the work that's being done. You can also set up templates where you can, as you set up a template, you can pull fields of information from the record itself to basically create something that's specific to a customer based on the information. Maybe I pull their first name, last name, their email address, and maybe something that's going on in the project inside of the subject that's here. The question I think that you're asking is, are we going to allow you to use your own email instead of the system generated email that's here? And the answer to that is long-term, yes. I don't have that on the short-term roadmap that's there, but it's something that we'll definitely consider. The first phase of this was just keeping it super simple so that you didn't have to have each user come in and set up their, their, their email. But the group email piece that you're talking about would be much easier if you had the ability to select from the info app piece. So okay. I, I guess the long answer is we don't have it now, but that was what was expected to be phase two. We were just waiting to see the response back of how many requests we had for that. Okay, and folks, we're down to the last three questions. So now's the last chance to throw in any last minute questions you still want answered on this webinar. Tom is asking, would you consider allowing a dashboard to be shown up in the main menu in its own right, rather than only as a view within an app? Great question, Tom. It is. And it's something we're trying to figure. There's two things we're trying to figure out right now how to do. Those of you that aren't familiar with dashboards, you can come into Smart Suite and create a dashboard. I don't, yeah, I don't have one set up here, but a dashboard, you can pull data from any solution that you have access to and create any type of custom dashboard that you have. What some people are asking is the ability to control these tabs that are across the top so that I could have one maybe at the very beginning that said dashboards. So when everybody logged in, they start with the dashboard and that's where they begin to perform their work. So no, yes, we're going to figure that out. Everything is done on actually using dashboards. It's now how do we make it available here? We have the same request on the homepage for certain people where they want to start when they first log in here with the ability to see a dashboard. And we're working on lots of designs to figure out how we can make that available and unique to each user specifically. So you might not wanna see the list of solutions. You just wanna see, this is my stuff, the way that I have it configured and have the ability to create your own 
personal dashboard that's pulling data from any of these different solutions just to help you manage your work. If you have thoughts, if you're excited about that and have thoughts, please share them back with us on how you would like to be able to do that because we're that's something we're working on right now. Okay, amazing. Jeff is asking, could we get a daily digest from the My Work section? I so often forget to check it. So you're just wanting a daily, I guess the question is, they're wanting a daily digest just sent to their email of what is in their My Work. Exactly. Okay, that's interesting. That has not been requested before. All the data is here. It could be maybe as simple as we give you a dot, dot, dot menu and you could just turn that feature on and set the frequency and we could just send you what's here with your currently assigned task. Or an automation yeah. that says, if there's anything in the My Work section, send me an email, like just the trigger. Yeah, I don't know that every user would want that because that could be- Complex to set up. Yeah, for companies with hundreds, thousands of people, that would be big, but maybe turning that on per user and allowing you to set that would be a good option there. The other thing that just came to mind is maybe in, communication center, when you set that up, maybe that's just an, a checkbox that we make here that you get that daily digest of your open assigned my work items. That, that's probably better. Well, um, Brian, can you actually make note of that for us? Make sure we add a feature request that's there and that's something that we'll start working on. Okay. We have a quick question over here from Cameron. He says, hey, John, recently finished the consultant certification. I'm wondering if you have any training or something related to the sales side of SmartSuite, like ICP, Persona, Battle Cards, et cetera. I have a good idea, but always good to have companies' viewpoint. First of all, Carmen, congratulations on becoming a certified SmartSuite consultant. Yeah, for sure. That is a good question. I th we, the answer right now is no, we don't, but that is something that we do in a one-on-one -on -one with partners every day. One of our partner team members, either Avi or Josh or someone on the sales side, whether that's Tara or our CRO, we're happy to drill in and help you understand what we're seeing from our perspective as great entry points of the product, but also better understanding maybe the types of customers that you're working with and what the ICP would maybe be inside of that. There are a number of companies that are starting to provide training material around no code and smart suite specifically. Layla at Process Driven now has a getting started with smart suite course. I just need to take a peek and see it's meant more for consultants that are building practices around that as well. I just need to see if it has the sales part for you. But in the short term, if you just want to contact us, we'd be happy to get somebody on our team connected with you to go through that live. And maybe that's the first part of us building this content for training. Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to reach out to me directly. Always happy to work with partners on any requests. We have our last question for today, or actually one before the last one. Any specific view to easily report and see the allocated resources? How can I see the workload of people? Which projects are assigned by person and time assigned to? Yep. So there, there's a number of views that we have that do that. We have a great video that Nate has created for professional services firms that are wanting to do resource allocation across projects, either small or large teams. If, if we could just get note of who requested this, we can get that video to them. We also have a new view type that we are looking at once Gantt chart is done that is specific to that particular capability, which is a resource scheduling view. The reality is we're probably three months away from that. It's not a short term, but we have lots of customers using us with GridView to do what you just said with all the information that's included. We'll make sure, I think there's two different videos that we've created specifically on this that we can get out to you. Okay, amazing. And I see Chris Deckers is also asking for that resource video. So Brian or whoever on the team can send that out. We have two people asking for that video. Oh, it looks like it was sent out already. Amazing. Look at that. So fast. We have a few quick questions that just popped up. I'm going to go through them real quick. We have a question asking about the AI solution creation being released. Is the AI solution creation being released with other AI features? So if you want the ability to create solutions using AI in SmartSuite, it's still in beta. To show if you're not familiar with this, you can click here. You can say, ask AI to generate 
We have been prototyping and playing with you being able to describe exactly what you want. And then what happens, we go behind the scenes using AI, or AI does, and builds a solution that includes each of the apps, the fields in each app, and actually creates the fields and the, the solution guide automatically for you based on that. The feedback has been from good to great that, that's in there, meaning good. Sometimes the template that we have is better. So we're trying to find how to make AI even better at creating things. But in some cases, it is phenomenal. When you need one-off examples, like in the one that we're showing here, if you need a CRM for an autom automotive dealership, it's pretty good. Like you just be shocked at what comes back. This is in beta. If you would like to have access to this, you just need to let our support team know. We will turn this on specifically for your account that's there. The general release from this is probably four to five weeks away, and we will be doing the same thing. You'll have the ability at the account level to decide if you want this to be an option for your team or not. So some people have asked that it not. They're a little hesitant to let AI into the organization, so they've asked that it not be available. So that's what's holding us up just a little bit on making this available to everybody. Okay. And two more quick questions. Vincent Berger is asking, are you, do we plan on providing a, ling a language script smarter than formulas? Basically using AI, I think is what you're asking to be able to create a formula for you. That capability is available now. A number of people have solved that for Excel, which we're very similar to. It's not on my or on our team's roadmap for the next four to six weeks, but it is on the roadmap. I can get a better, I guess I can give you a better gauge if I think it's going to happen this quarter or next quarter. But when you pull up the formula builder, there'll be an option to use natural language to describe what you want. And then it will actually create the formula for you behind the scenes. I think the question might have been about scripting as well. Do we plan to have the scripting oh, capability yeah. inside the smart gotcha. product? Yes. So we will have a concept that is similar to scripting or extensions that allows third parties to build things that then can be executed specifically inside of SmartSuite. We have that capability now with ply.com in that when you use the rules and capabilities of ply, they have the ability to add additional buttons across the top of the screen that perform certain actions that you want. So we are just, again, trying to figure out the best way to make this available to you, whether it's at the record level that's here and where you would have the ability to add those items as icons so you could really customize this for a user. Another option is to give some space below the name that we allow you to, to very quickly add those. And then obviously we have a button field type and you have the ability to do some pretty interesting things with buttons and they will be able to call scripts as well. So the answer is Pete's been working on that for a while. I think we're getting close on how scripting will work. And then it's just about the implementation of just the scripting language itself. Okay. And last question for today. Nicole Ingram is asking, morning, do you currently have the ability to create email template blasts, specifically adding graphics to emails? Yes, you can include graphics. I guess you're just talking about using an automation to generate an email blast. We have limits on the number of emails that you could send that's there. So if you're talking about wanting to do campaigns that are thousands of emails a day, SmartSuite is not built for that. I would say go to MailChimp or somebody else that does that, but you can, we are integrated with MailChimp, so you can pass the information directly to them. So you don't have to do any of the work of re-putting back the information, you just set the rule set that's there. But if it's you're talking something smaller than that in the hundreds of emails a day, yes, SmartSuite is able to handle that for sure. Okay, folks, thanks for staying with us eight minutes over time and keep the comments and questions co going through social media and any support channels. Bobby, I just wanted to mention just a couple of things in closing here. So if you're new to SmartSuite and you are trying to figure out if SmartSuite might be for you or just trying to learn a little bit more about SmartSuite, every morning we have an office hours that's available from nine to 10 specific standard time where you can just access, talk to a member of our onboarding team. It's a group setting. You can listen to the questions from other users, but it's a great way to get to know SmartSuite very quickly if you want one-on-one -on -one attention to help build specific things that are there. I'd also request that take a look in the SmartSuite community. If you've not joined the community yet, please do join. 
You can answer questions there. We have experts that are partners and power users that are in the community every day answering those and helping you come up with different ways to do things that's there. And then the third thing, just say if you're not aware of the Smart Suite Academy, it's a way for you to come in. It's online based training that you can take at your own pace. We have courses that cover every topic for all the features in Smart Suite. And then if you're interested to get certified, once you've taken the courses, there's just tests associated with the certification levels and all of that's available on the homepage of the Academy. So I, I appreciate everyone's time and also make sure that you keep those feature requests coming inside of our feature request module that's there. And it's something that our product team looks about and talks about every week that's there. All right. And I think that's it. Appreciate your time. Have a great day. Thanks everyone.